Mecca, my beloved, I must ask you something. Who is the father of your unborn child? The queen who lost her crown. Once upon a time, in the prosperous kingdom of Umwaka, lived a beautiful and kind-hearted queen named Neka. Her beauty was renowned throughout the land, but it was her hospitality and humble nature that endeared her to her people. She would often walk among them, sharing in their joys and sorrows, and providing help whenever it was needed. Yet, despite all the love and admiration she received, a deep sadness lingered in her heart. Queen Neka had been married to King Obina for many years, and though their union was strong and their love for each other evident, but they had no children. This fact weighed heavily on Neka, as the kingdom longed for an heir to secure the throne. The king's family, once patient, had grown restless. They began to pressurize King Obina to take a second wife one who would bear him children to continue the royal lineage. Your Majesty, the future of Umaka rests on your shoulders. The people need an heir, someone to carry on your legacy, said Chief Chukudi, the king's advisor. King Obina's face darkened as these words. I understand your concerns, Chief Jokode, but my loyalty and love are with Neka. At the right time, she will conceive. I have faith. Despite his firm stance, the king's assertion did little to quell the growing dissatisfaction among his kinsmen. Gossip spreads like wildfire through the village and beyond. The whispers became louder. The looks more pointed and the treatment of Queen Neka more unkind. As the months passed, the pressure on Neka became unbearable. The village women who were once her admirer began to shun her. Servants who once served her diligently now gossiped behind her back. The queen's closest friend, Adora, watched with a heavy heart as Neka's spirits began to break. Neka, you must speak to the king. Advise him to take another wife. It may be the only way to ease the pressure on you. Atora advised one evening as they sat together in the queen's chamber. Neka sighed deeply. I cannot bear the thoughts of sharing Obina with another woman. Adora, but I also cannot stand to see him thought between his love for me and his duty to his people. The queen's heart was heavy with the decision she faced. Her love for Obina was unwavering, but she also understood the gravity of their situation. The kingdom needed an heir, and if she could not provide one, she felt it was her duty to step aside 
for the sake of Umwaka. Weeks turned into months, and the tension in the palace grew. The king's kingsmen, frustrated by Obina's loyalty to Neka, began to take matters into their own hands. They brought beautiful and young maidens to the palace, hoping that one might catch the king's eye and sway his heart. But Obina remained resolute. I will not be swayed, the king declared. My heart belongs to Neka, and I will not betray her. One evening, as Neka and her friend Adora walked through the palace garden, Adora brought up a delicate subject. My queen, there may be another way. I have heard of a man in the neighboring village of Obodonta. His name is Timba. He is a drunk, but he is quite a man. Perhaps, if we could convince him to be with you, it might save your marriage and the kingdom. Neka stared at Adora in shock. You cannot be serious, Adora. How could I even consider such thing? I know it is a desperate measure, Adora admitted. But think of the pressure it would relieve. The king's family would be satisfied and Obina would not have to take another wife. It is a heavy decision, but it may be our last hope. Hmm. The queen was torn. The very thoughts of such an act was disgusting to her. But the pressure from the palace and the kingdom's need for an heir weighed gradually on her mind. After many sleepless nights and tearful prayers, Neka made up her mind to give Adora's suggestion a try. Disguising herself as a commoner, Queen Neka left the palace in the dead of the night. She met Adora on a lonely path leading to Obodonta, the neighboring village where Dimba lived. They traveled in silence, the weight of their plans pressuring heavily upon them. Dimba, notorious for his drunken state, was easily lured with a few kegs of palm wine. Neka, with a heavy heart, followed Adora's instructions and took the herbal concussion prepared by Adora's herbalist husband. In their desperation, she did what she thought necessary to save her marriage and the kingdom. Weeks later, back in the palace, Neka fell ill. The palace medicine man was called to examine her. And to everyone's astonishment, he announced that Queen was with a child. The news spread like wildfire. The king's kiss men was excited. The nobles celebrated. And the people of Umwaka felt a renewed sense of hope. But amidst the jubilation, King Obina remained distant. His joy, once so noticeable, was now replaced by a cold detachment that even surprised Queen Neka. One evening, unable to bear the king's coldness any longer, Neka confronted him. My king, her voice trembling, why do you distance yourself from me? 
I thought you would be overjoyed by the news of our child. Obina looked at her with sorrowful eyes. Mecca, my beloved, I must ask you something. Who is the father of your unborn child? Neka felt the word spin around her. Who do you mean, Obina? How can you ask such questions? With heavy heart, Obina revealed his secret. Neka, I have a health issue that makes it impossible for me to father a child. I have known this for many years. That is why I refused to take another wife, as my family suggested. I knew that it would expose my condition, and I chose to remain with you and plan for my brother to take over from me when I'm gone. Neka stared at him in disbelief, her heart broken. Why did you never tell me? I wanted to protect you, Obina said. I thought we could grow old together, perhaps adopt a child and live peacefully. But now, everything has changed. I cannot deceive my people and anger our ancestors by accepting another man's child as my own. I must do what is right for Umwaka. The next morning, Obina called for an emergency meeting with the kinsmen and the elders. He explained the situation with a heavy heart, revealing his secrets and the condition he's facing. The castle was shocked. Your Majesty, this is a grave situation. We must think carefully about how to proceed, said Chief. Chukudi. Obina nodded. I have decided to step down as king. My younger brother, Ike Chuku, who already had three sons and a daughter, will take the throne. Meg and I will leave Umwaka and live quietly in another community. There were moments of shock and disbelief. But the decision was final. The announcement was made to the people who were heartbroken but understanding. They bid farewell to their beloved king and queen who had sacrificed so much for the kingdom. Neka and Obina settled in a quiet village far from Umaka. Their love, though tested, remained strong. They lived happily finding joy in the simple things. As time passed, Neka often reflected on their journey. She realized that through love and loyalty were more valuable than any crown nor throne. She had lost her crown, but in the end, she found something far more precious, a family bond by love and sacrifice. Years later, as Neka and Obina grew old, their story was told and retold to children across the land. It became a story of love, sacrifice, and the true meaning of royalty. The people of Omaka remembered their former king and queen with fondness and respect, honoring their legacy for generations to come. Do you know that Ozenua was an African king, the greatest warrior king of Benin in modern Nigeria? Oba Ozenua the Conqueror was the second of five referred Benin warrior kings as a skillful warrior and tactician, he played a significant role in the military expansion of the Benin Kingdom 
and is believed to have won no less than 200 battles, which earned him the appellation Ozelua ni Ibaromi, meaning Ozelua the Conqueror. He is remembered on a number of burning plagues, as well as wood and ivory carvings. Ozelua was able to extend the boundaries of Benin from the Niger River in the east virtually to Lagos in the west. Tradition calls him the first ruler in West Africa to have contact with the Portuguese explorers who were then exploring the western coast of sub-Saharan Africa. Thanks for watching Love from the Classic Stories.